Nutrition and Digestion by Cammie Caldwell and Morgan Hunt. First, we will talk about nutrition. Goodbye, Pyramid, and hello, my plate. The new recommended daily food intake suggests that you should have fruit, grains, protein, vegetables, and dairy in every meal. In regards towards energy and nutritional values in foods, it is recommended that daily a person should get 45 to 60 percent of their caloric intake from carbohydrates. It is recommended that the amount of fat in a person's diet should be about 20 to 35 percent of their daily nutritional intake. To maintain their protein levels, a person should consume about 10 to 35 percent from protein sources. It is recommended a person eats under 50 grams of sugar a day. Avoid added sugar into foods and beverages. How to determine if a food is healthy or not. Before purchasing or consuming any food, it is critical to read and analyze the label on the back of the food packaging. First, look at how many total calories are in the food item. Try to avoid any one item that has 400 or more calories. Then read and analyze the amount of fats, of, the amount of fats in the food. Try to avoid any trans fats and unsaturated fats. Determine the amount of protein available in the food. Try to eat lean protein items such as chicken, turkey, and fish. Evaluate the amount of sugar in the item. Look at the grams of sugar and determine how much of the sugar is added into the food. Try to avoid any added sugar and eat all natural sugars. Always read before you eat. Here are some examples of healthy food sources. As you can see, in the quinoa and the brown rice and in the pasta, there aren't any saturated fats or trans fats. There is a relatively low amount of cholesterol in all three foods, and there aren't any added sugars. Here are some examples of unhealthy foods. We have a hamburger and french fries. If you look at the saturated fats in the hamburger, you can see that 40% of your daily value comes from just saturated fats. You can see there is a high amount of cholesterol and sugars added in. If you look at the french fries, you can see 42% of your daily fat intake comes from just trans fats. These foods are not adequate enough to maintain proper nutrition and digestion for the human body. Now, here's the digestion section of our lecture. After food is consumed, it is broken down into smaller molecules. Cells in the body use these smaller molecules for energy or to build other molecules. This energy is known as ATP and comes from the chemical bond energy in food molecules. Digestion occurs in an animal's digestive tract or inside the lysosome of a cell. This process is known as catabolism. Catabolism can be defined as enzyme-catalyzed reactions that release energy by the breakdown of large molecules into smaller ones. There are three stages to the breakdown of food molecules in order to produce ATP. In stage one, enzymes break down food molecules in the intestine, which occurs outside of cells, or food is broken down in the lysosome, which is inside the cells. Proteins are broken down into amino acids during this stage, sugars are broken down into smaller sugars like glucose, and fats are broken down into fatty acids. In stage two for sugars, a chain of reactions called glycolysis converts glucose into smaller molecules called pyruvate. During glycolysis, ATP and NADH are produced. The picture to your right shows this process. In stage two for sugars, a chain of reactions called glycolysis converts glucose into smaller molecules called pyruvate. During glycolysis, ATP and NADH are produced. The picture to your right shows that two ADP, two NAD plus, and two ADP are what needed are what is needed for this reaction. In stage two for fats, fats are broken down into fatty acids through oxidation. Oxidation is a process that makes compounds lose electrons. These fatty acids then moves to the bloodstream where the cells can absorb them. Stage three of the breakdown of food occurs in the mitochondria, where acyl-CoA and coenzyme A are needed to link to the fat or sugar that has been broken down. This new component enters the citric acid cycle where it is oxidized into carbon dioxide. This process also produces NADH. The electrons from NADH go to the electron transport chain, which produces ATP and consumes oxygen. 
To your left is a picture of a cell, and the mitochondria is highlighted as well as a lysosome. To your right, this is a picture of the citric acid cycle where sugars and fats go in with ACL-CoA and coenzyme A, which produces CO2 and NADH. The electrons move to the electron transport chain and pa pow ATP is produced. After the consumption and digestion of food, the overall product is ATP. That's why we eat to get energy. Overall, the energy is made and consumed every one to two minutes and half of this energy is used in another process called phosphorylation. Some of this energy is used to keep the organism's body temperature warm. This is why we eat.